I fell about 70 foot upside down feet were in the rigging lines, all the equipment still on, into the ground, I remember nothing else. So I'd crushed the C5 and 6, C6 vertebra on the top of my spine, which meant that, that I was paralysed. Your, your time in the paratroopers then, then came to, you know, to sadden with your injury. Uh, yeah. Tell us a bit about that. I mean, you nearly lost your life, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. So um, um, military parachuting, you know, there's no getting away from it. It's an extremely dangerous sport as opposed to sport parachuting, which is very, very safe and is taken part by hundreds of thousands of people every day uh, with no injuries or very little. But military parachuting is a whole new ball game. And on this particular exercise, um, a battalion exercise, we'd had a horrific time. We'd lost three guys with parachute accidents and um, there was a new shoot involved and it, we wasn't entirely sure whether it was the right thing for the job. And I was, um, I was only about nine stone, nine pounds then. And so the lighter you are, the more equipment you get to bring to the drop zone. Bearing in mind, paratroopers have to take everything. We haven't got vehicles bringing stuff for you. You know, we can't sting it all in the tank and go to war. We have to put it all on our back. So literally everything you needed, you had to take. So I got given loads of kit and I sort of staggered onto the plane with this equipment strapped to me and I went out the door pitch black. Uh, the chute opened, but I was in twists, very, very common. I started to kick out of the twists and I realised I couldn't lower the equipment and I was getting more and more tangled. It was, And I was literally feet from the ground at that point when somebody went underneath me and stole the air from the parachute. It completely collapsed. And then I fell about 70 foot upside down, feet were in the rigging lines, all the equipment still on, into the ground, I remember nothing else. Woke up six weeks later in a military hospital, starving hungry, couldn't move a muscle, couldn't feel any part of my body apart from my face. Um, I, you know, you can imagine the kind of extent of that, that damage. I mean, I don't think on that medical list there was too many areas of my body that wasn't ticked with a break, a fracture or a swelling of some sort. And then um, I promptly spent the next 18 months trying to get back to normal. Did, uh, did they tell you that, that you were going to make a full recovery? Well, was they there... didn't know. They just didn't know because spinal injuries. I'd crushed the C5 and six, C6 vertebra on the top of my spine, which meant that, that I was paralysed. Um, but I was paralysed to the extent that every day I could feel something. It was like having this tremendous pins and needles and then suddenly I could feel it. And, and I was probably the only one that wasn't that concerned. I, I was thinking, yeah, all right, you know, yesterday I couldn't feel my left foot, now I can. You know, today I can feel my right foot, you know, and, and I'm moving a bit. Uh, they had strapped me to this bed, which used to turn over every four hours. It was a horrific. You never had any sleep. And uh, I was on a men's surgical ward and... People were, you know, up all night making all sorts of sounds and noises. And I'd never been great at sleeping on my back. I always wanted to sleep on my side. That was horrific. And then you'd be on your front. But you're strapped to these two beds that are identical that turn over. So you do four hours on your front, turn you over four hours on your back. Plus, I was in traction. I had this framework built around my head, which was screwed into my skull. And they had um, heavy weighted bags at the end trying to stretch that vertebrae. But I'm pleased to say when they came off and I started to get some good physio, um, I knew then when I s sat up the first time in bed and then sort of made my own way to a wheelchair, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this. Um, sadly, there was no sort of like Stoke Mandeville them days and there was no real place you could go that specialised in that. So you were kind of caught in the environment of a normal working hospital, which was a military hospital, but however they accepted um, civilian uh, patients. And so it wasn't like it is today where there are specialist places you can go. It was sort of, um, and of course it was quite rare. Um, only people in terrible rugby injuries or, or um, swimming pool accidents was the common phrase used. You know, people that would dive into shallow swimming pools would hit their head and give themselves a compound fracture of the spine and find themselves paralysed for life, you know. And everybody that I met um, in this physiotherapy department because eventually we moved to RAF Chesington uh, which was part of a wing of Headley Court which was a very well renowned and, and very established uh, physio centre. When you went there there was some civilian people there that had had rugby accidents and swimming pool accidents so you, you kind of fell into that phase. There wasn't too many people 
that fell to their death from an aeroplane. So I was in a sort of a, a very position, small group yeah. of players, a very unique club I was in. 